Hi, good evening. My name is Pastor Devin, and welcome to Right on the Money. Uh, we have this class the last month, or well, the fourth Monday of every month. Uh, next week, we have a brand new class. Uh, uh, Jean Lomaster will be giving a class. Uh, it's going to be gos called Gospel Shorts. She's going to have little, um, uh, she'll take little pieces of the gospel, uh, give her a little take on it, and uh, there'll be like uh, three or four every week, and it'll be about 20 minutes, 25 minutes as usual. Uh, as we do every Monday night. And so it'll be a, a, a new take on, on our, our classes, a fresh take on that. So I hope you enjoy her uh, next Monday night. And today we're talking about Right on the Money. And I've looked back and I've been doing this class for almost two and a half years. And the last couple of classes I've done, we've talked about uh, taxes and how to do with the stimulus and things like that, things are going on, how to prepare for a disaster and things like that. And some of the questions I've got um, is uh, back to way back in the beginning when I first started the class. And so I thought tonight I would revisit some of the topics we first started with uh, just as a review because a lot of people have been watching it since in the last couple of years and they missed the beginning part, the beginning principles of why uh, we do a right on the money. And right now we really need to talk about how to be right on the money because uh, uh, prices are going up. You have looked at the gas pump lately? Yeah, prices are going up. Uh, go to the grocery store. Prices are going up. Inflation is is going up, and uh, that's just a, a thing that happens. Um, uh, and uh, typically, just to be honest, it has nothing to do with uh, Christianity or things like that. When a Democrat's in office, usually price inflation goes up. When a Republican's in office, they come back a little bit. Uh, I don't have anything to do with that's right or wrong or different. Just kind of way that the market uh, uh, seems to go. Uh, and we're seeing a, 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 a spike in those things. Uh, and so, uh, and the other thing is, is, we're not seeing a really big rise in wages. Uh, we have talked about, you know, that's what we talked about, how the minimum wage, that's a bad thing to go up. And the minimum wage is not a survive, is not a living wage. It's, it's, it's the lowest wage we'll pay people, uh, but so you can strive to be better. If the minimum wage goes up, everything goes up because the, the, your employers, uh, McDonald's is not going to pay their employees fifteen dollars an hour and still have a dollar menu. This isn't going to happen. Um, so, uh, so we want to. So we know inflation is coming. We know things are going up. Or we see the signs around us, and so we really need to uh, reassess our financial goals. Uh, what's going on? Uh, also, you've heard about the stimulus. A lot of you got the stimulus checks. We've talked about that, and uh, possibly a higher child tax credit this year on your taxes for well, for next year. Uh, and those are all things that help out. Uh, but at the same time, um, eventually that money's going to come back to government. There's nothing that's free, okay? You might get something free now, but then later on it has to be paid for at some point. Uh, usually that's in the form of higher taxes because, oh, we, we don't have enough money for this or for that. Um, remember, money is finite. There's, there's only so much of it uh, to, to go around. So we really start as Christians. What's God saying about? He says you have to be a wise steward. He has a lot of, Jesus talks a lot about that. And, and being a wise steward means that he's giving you stuff, which is your money, your abilities to survive, to make money and do what you have to do. And he's giving it to you. And he wants you to be wise about how you spend it and where you spend it. And also he says many times in the Bible, look at the signs of the times. And if you do that, you have to look at it and go, maybe I need to make some different choices. I need to, to change how I'm doing things. And, and, and that's very important. Because here's what happens. People just go out and live their life the same way as they do. And, and they don't recognize what's going on. What happens? Oh no, why don't I have enough money more? Why don't I have this? And God says, you know, you're not supposed to just be a steward. You're supposed to be a wise steward. And a wise steward looks and he says, takes it as big of the picture as they can and say, hey, how can I do the, what can I do now so I can get to where I want to be? Um, and, and so back, way back when I first started doing this class, uh, there's a verse in the Bible, it's, it's Proverbs 29, 18, uh, where there is no vision, people perish. And, 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 and where there is no plan, people perish. And with money, it's the same thing. Uh, if you want to get somewhere in life with your money, uh, you have to have a goal in mind. You have to have an idea of where you want to go. Because without that vision, without saying, this is where I want to be when I'm 20 or 30 or 50 or 70 or 90 or wherever your goals are, um, this is what I want to do. You got to put that down, and you got to put it down in writing somewhere. You, so where you can know this is where I'm going to. Because there'll be times you get you stay on the plan. Sometimes you get off the plan. But then when you get off the plan, you go, Hey, I need to get back to where that is. Because if I don't get back on it, I won't get to where I want to be when I retire or when I have children, when they need to go to college, and all those things. Uh, that's another thing. If you're new, a few months ago I did a way a neat way to pay for college. Uh, 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 without having to give your money to the government. That, that was pretty uh, neat. 
Um, but uh, we, we get it. But all those things take planning and a vision to say this is where I need to go. Because without a goal, you won't do what's necessary to to get not only survive but to get ahead in life so you can enjoy life. God wants you to enjoy this life. He, and he blesses those who do that, who, who, who have a proper understanding of how money is supposed to work. And when you do that, God then can bless you. Even if you might, well, I don't have this, I don't have that. Well, God, he's not limited. But he's limited on how we approach him, how we, uh, how we honor him. And he has given us all. Everything on this planet is, is his. Remember, he made it all. So it's everything you own. Uh, and uh, what do we do with what God gave us? Is then God says what? He who is faithful in a little... Well, only get a little. He who's faithful in, in, in uh, and faithful in little will also be faithful in much. If you're not faithful in little, you only have a little. But if you're faithful in little, then God can trust you with more. Sorry, I misquoted that. I got kind of, I didn't know I was going to use that verse tonight. Uh, so it wasn't written down in my notes here. But we have those different things. So we got to be wise stewards. And, and like I said, having a goal is wise. You know, you need to sit down. Uh, if you're single, hey, sit down and, and get some wise counsel around you. Um, typically, it's not always your family. And your friends, because uh, they, they, they won't always tell you what you need to hear. Uh, usually find someone in, in your church who is older, who has been successful. Now, that's another key. Uh, don't find someone who's been unsuccessful. Because uh, <laughs> if they're unsuccessful, they're not going to help you be successful. Find someone who's been successful. So, and what do you call success? Uh, now, having a lot of money is not always success. But being at a point in life where they can enjoy life, they don't have to worry about anything. That's success. Uh, how do they get there? Pick their brain and then add it to, and then, then say, okay, I like that part. I don't like that part. Also, don't forget to include God. Hey, God, this is where I want to be. Where do you think I should be? I mean, what if God told you what he wants you to do? Wouldn't that be a lot easier too? A lot of times we only come to God with money problems. Well, we only come to God about money when we have a problem. Why not go to God? Hey, God, be part of the planning process so I can do what's right. Because uh, when you have a goal and you set a goal, uh, you, you're more likely to strive for it. If you don't set a goal and hope to get there, you, you'll squander your money here, there, and everywhere. So this is back. This is our first lesson uh, that that we ever had. So it's very important to do that. Um, now, come now. Talking about, like I said, we have inflation and things coming up. Uh, it's important to have that goal in place because times the money will ebb and flow. The the, the way the markets go will ebb and flow. And uh, and if you have a goal in mind, it's easier to make the tough choices. Uh, with money, sometimes we got to make a tough choice. Hey, I, I've always done this this way. I've always done this, but I need to give that up. Uh, and it's easier to give that up and stay within your, 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 your boundaries so you don't have to worry about things. You don't get into debt. So you don't get into places where you, where you get into trouble. Why? Because you have that goal in mind, and the goal is what's important. Where you want to end up is important. Uh, so when it comes down to, well, am I still going to eat out three times a week? Well, things, prices are going up, all that. But I really want to be able to retire at this age, or I really want to be able to do this for my kids, or I really want to do this for myself. It makes it easier to make, hey, maybe I should just maybe do it once or twice a month instead of a week. Um, you know, that $4 Starbucks coffee. We don't have any in Ponzi. I don't drink coffee. Now maybe not, not buy it every day and just buy, make your own for like 50, 60 cents at home and save that money. You know, it makes it easier to make some choices. Um, whether or not to take a lunch to work rather than go out for lunch with the, with the, with everybody else. Because uh, what happens when money and finance, uh, inflation goes, everybody's complaining about money, right? Hey, you want to be smart about it. God says to be wise about that. And when he does that, he can bless your life. Uh, one of the other things happens when we, when we have financial issues, we forget about God. You know, he put God first. Who's your source? You know, I always tell you, if you're going to, part of your goal has to be, hey, what God asks. You know, he asked for a couple things. He asked for 10%. He asked for uh, offerings to help missions and things like that. And first fruits wants you. You do that, God says you'll never be forsaken. And the promise he makes is that when bad times come, you'll, you'll prosper those bad times. And I can tell you from, 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 from experience, it happens to me every year. I, I, can't, I, I can't tell you how many times God has done things for me. Um, and, and when it's like, oh, I, I can't afford to do that, but I do it. And then what happens? God takes care of things. And he wants to do that. And God has to be a priority in that. But let's talk about some practical things tonight. So we talked about having a goal. Got to have a goal. I mean, I know I said that like probably eight times now. But it's so important if you want to reach financial success to have a goal in mind. And, and write it down where you can see it. Because if you just say it or think it, put it in the head here, guess what happens? It, it 
all the distractions of life come in and you you can forget about it or I mean, it's not so important but when it's written down somewhere you can see it if you oh, about single if you're married make sure you discuss your wife if you have a family involve your kids in the decision when you involve your kids in the decision it makes it easier for them when you have to do different things that they're not used to i know i involve my kids i tell them about things that have happened now we've been blessed the last few years i haven't really had to have a conversation like this but when we have in the past they, they understand why not i remember one christmas um uh we, we were we were we were not doing so well and, and the kids knew about it but we still had faith in god on that and, the, and my children, and when we bought them presents, uh, I got a present, a little envelope on the tree. And they had put together uh, their, their, their money they've gotten from different places for Christmas and things like that. And they gave it back to the family. Uh, now, I, I didn't take their money. Uh, they, they, they say keep it. It's in, right now, it's in their, their, I have a fund for each of my children. So when they graduate from college or high school or want to get married, that money's there for them to use however they want. It's their money. Uh, but it was deep, and the kids are, when the whole, everybody's involved, it also takes the pressure off of the one person. A lot of problems, a lot of money problems happen because one person takes the responsibility of the money and, and, and doesn't share it. And then they get so burdensome that, they have, that their, their personality changes, their lifestyle changes, how, how they react to others change, and they begin to push their own loved ones away. Now, in a, in a family unit, somebody has to be the one who writes the checks and keeps the checkbook. I'm not saying everybody, ha everybody and the kids have to do that, but we should all be involved in the financial. Whoever's in your family unit should be involved in the financial process uh, because then they can help bear, they, they can pray for you. They can do things. They, they, they can encourage you, whoever is the person who is struggling underneath the burden uh, because they're not holding it all themselves. And when you have to make those tough choices, it's easier to make the tough choices when everybody is involved. If you wait till it gets terrible and then tell the family, hey, we're going to stop doing this or that, that's when the fights, that's when the confusion happens because they're like, it's come out of left field. Please, when it comes to money matters as a family, uh, make sure you, you, you share that with, with your entire family where you're at. Uh, you know, in my house, I, I do the books and I have all these different funds where the money goes. We're going to talk about that in a second. But every month at the end of the month, I tell my wife where we're at. Um, some months are great, some months not so great. But she has an idea where things are, so we can. And so nothing surprises us. And we have to pray about something. We have to make a change. It's easy to make a change uh, when when we have that type of transparency and people are involved. And like I said, with my kids being involved. So getting to the inflation. Um, Here's, a, here's something that's very important to have a goal. And once you have a goal, then you got to start doing something to get to that goal. And uh, one of the first things I, I, in our first classes, and I've mentioned this in many classes, is you got to have a, a you got to know where your money is. You got to have your, 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 your survival needs. Uh, you know, survival needs is your house, your car, uh, your, your heating bill, and also giving to God. Those are all because God's not in, in the equation. Because this is called right on the money with the T with a cross on the end, if you see our symbol. It's because, <laughs> you know, God will bless. It's not your money anyways. It's God's money to begin with. And if you use it wisely, God will make sure you're always taken care of. So he has to be part of that survival process. Uh, one of the first things I ask people when they need help, I'll help anybody. Uh, but if they haven't been given to God, they, they haven't been doing the first basic step. And do that, God always comes through. He says he's not a liar. You can trust me on that. Read Malachi chapter 3. God says what will happen. Uh, and then you have your then you have your, your basic needs after that, uh, which you know, come into uh, could be um, clothing. Um, boy, I'm drawing a blank. I'm um, the, the second tier, uh, clothing, um, gas, things like things you need uh, to, to 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 operate your lives. Uh, and then after that is your wants, things that you want to have happen. And, and they got to be tiered into three categories because a lot of times people go out and they spend the money on their wants and don't take care of their survival needs first. Right? And, uh, and, and that, that's, that's, that's the tough thing. Um, you know, you go to the store and say, you know, I really want that, 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 that bag of candy, but I really need to buy vegetables. You know, when you have that list in place of what's, what's more important and what money you have left, you, know, you make better choices because you have a goal in mind. Um, and, and so many times people don't do that. And another thing you need to do, uh, and this one's not, uh, I, I've heard it from many different sources, but I've always used it as well, is every dollar has to have a name. Every dollar. When you get your paycheck, every dollar needs a name. And you need to know where every dollar goes. Because um, here's the thing, people get their paycheck to put in the bank and they pay the bills and they hope they have enough money in there. 
it's better to know you have enough money in there. Uh, it's also better to know if you don't have enough money in there so you can make changes. Um, and, and you need to have, okay, when you get your paycheck, you need to take it and then divide it out. And say, this money's for this, this money's for this, this money's for this, this money's for this. Um, for, and when you gotta know, you gotta know your expenses. What your rent is, what you, how much money you spend on groceries, how much money you spend on gas, how much money you spend on clothes. Uh, and, oh, another thing that is necessary, is, this is not a want, going back to this, the, the basic needs, another basic need is fun. Um, you should put aside some money uh, every paycheck to do something fun. Because um, here's the deal, what, what's, the, what's the point of working through this world and never ever enjoying the fruits of your labors? Um, people go insane doing that. People then get jaded if they don't have a little bit of fun. Uh, and and what, what's fun to you? I don't know. We, we, I put back uh, $60 every month. And it builds up, and if we don't use it, we use it for vacation or whatever. But if we want to go out and go bowling, or we want to go uh, to out to eat at a special restaurant, it, it's, it's there. Uh, and it's money I don't need, because that money's been named fun. Uh, now the key with that is that you either use a computer program. If you don't have a computer, you can use envelopes. That's what Dave Ramsey talks about. Uh, I, I, you can get a cheap online software where you can, you, you can uh, put in the funds. You can even use a basic word program. Uh, and then each check says, okay, this much of this check goes to this, goes to rent, goes to paying God, goes to paying my electric bill, blah, blah, blah. And then here's the deal. That money only comes out of those funds for that purpose. That way you know you're always taking care of. You, you, you start with your survival needs, then to your basic needs, and then if you have any left over, then you do your wants. Problem with most people is they just kind of put money wherever and, and they, they kind of live by the, the, the seat of their pants. And, and I know some people, that they're wired right that way, okay? Uh, I, I'm wired very um, administratively. Uh, but, but it's okay, it doesn't matter how you're wired, you can always ask someone to help you, but you need to know every dollar has to have a name. This one's food, this one's rent, this one's God, this, I mean, they all have to have a name. So you know where it's going, and when you all have a name, at the end, if they all have a name and you have money left over, you're doing good. Then you can start thinking about retirement, goals, things for your kids, things like that. Um, but first of all, you need to have your basic needs and your, and, and your survival needs taken care of, and then you can put the rest of the money somewhere else. Now, what if you do that all and, you, and, and your basic needs and your survival needs aren't covered? Well, then you need to make a choice, right? Uh, what can I cut out? What can I change? Or maybe I need to go get a better job. You know, people always wonder, when should I go get another job? Well, when your present job isn't providing for you, you probably, but don't quit your job. Go find another job first, okay? Don't, don't do that. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of young people, they, they, they go to a job, they don't like it anymore, but hey, you know, if it's, if it's providing for your basic needs, keep it until you get your next job, because otherwise you're gonna go into debt and things, and, and you get another job, and it's not gonna cover your needs, you're not gonna be happy. Um, so it's using, God says, be a wise steward. Use your brain on that. And, and so it's very important that we do that. And, and you can have a little bit of fun with naming your money. You know, you know, if you, you want to name rent Matilda, I, it doesn't matter. But so you put your money where it's going to be, exactly where it's going to be, so it can be used exactly what it's for. Um, otherwise, like you, you'll you'll fall into the temptation that everybody else falls in. Well, I got money to make. I got money. I can go do this. Problem is what rents due on the first of the month, and so if you don't, and you can't wait to the first of the month to pay your rent, right? Or typically you have five days, the fifth most, most rental contracts. But the previous month you have to save up the money to pay that. Um, so, so you want to have your money in places and say, I'm not going to touch this because this goes here. I'm not going to touch this because this goes here. You might say, but I, I'm not having a lot of fun this month. And it might, for those who aren't doing it, the first couple months will be tough because you'll be like, you'll be stopping some things you normally like to do. But I'll tell you this. When you start naming your dollars, you'll feel something that you haven't felt in a while. You know what that's going to be? Peace. You know what, what gives people peace? Knowing that there's no bill collector coming after them. Knowing that, that, that they don't have to worry about coming up with the rent money when it's due because you've already set aside, you've already disciplined yourself to do that. Now, is it easy to do? For the first time, no. So get somebody who's wise. I, if you live in the Punks here, I'd be happy to set up a meeting and help you do that. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's something I do like the back of my hand, so it wouldn't be a whole lot of time off of my back. But find somebody who can help you with that. Like I said, and find someone who's successful. Someone who doesn't worry about money. Because uh, someone who doesn't worry about money is not going to teach you the right way to do things. Or someone who's always chasing another dollar bill, they're not going to be able to help you. They might be able to show you what not to do, but they're not going to be able to show you 
what to do. Uh, so get a good, wise counselor. So a, a, a person surrounds himself with wise counselors. Um, and then start doing that. And you'll find out the first month you might end up, oh, it didn't work. Well, that's okay, because guess what? You know, if you fail, that's okay. It, 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 but you're starting to create a habit that's going to help you in the future. The next month you readjust, and you readjust. You know, how do you know if you're living above your means? This is how you find out. And if you're living above your means, you know, you might go, well, wow, I, I might want to downsize here. Because it'll make, because here's the deal. When everything's paid, you just have this peace. You don't have to worry about things. And then when extra money comes in, it actually is what? Extra money. I have so many people, like, they, they get this money in, and they go, I got this extra money. It's so great. But then I go, and I go spend it, and I'm still in a big, you know, wouldn't it be great to get extra money and not have to worry and actually be extra money in your life? If someone wants to give you a gift, you can actually use the gift on yourself rather than pay a bill. And the way to do that is to discipline yourself. And then you'll look at your list and go, okay, well, I'm $150 over. Well, look what you can cut out of your life. What are things you don't have to have? And they say, but I really love those things. But, but if you're struggling financially and you, and, and you have fun, what's the number one thing people fight over is money. Uh, if you want to have that in your life, by all means, continue doing the wrong thing. Um, but, you know, if you cut some things out, I mean, there's, there's, some, there, there's nothing that replaces financial peace. There's, no, there, there's nothing like it. Um, you know, and you can wake up and not have to worry about chasing after the next dollar. You know, the majority, I think, a stat I read, it's like 90, 91, 92% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Wow. Would you like to get away from that? This is step one. You got to have, well, step one and two. Number one, have a goal. You know, it could be a retirement or it could be as simple as, I want to have enough money to make that if I lost my job for a couple of weeks, I could survive. Now, there's, there are different schools of thought and all that. Uh, and, and we can eventually revisit that if you want to make a comment. We can revisit that the next time. Uh, I have little goals that you could put in place to, to get to. Um, but wouldn't it be nice to have that peace of mind? But here's the thing. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a goal where you want to get to, I can guarantee you this financially. You won't get there. And it can't be in your head. It has to be written down. I can't say that enough. You have to write down where you want to be, where you want to go. And you have to see it on a daily basis so it's ingrained inside of you. So when you're in a place and you want to do that impulse buy, and like, oh no, 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 I, I know because that's not going to get me, that's not going to give me peace. You know, there's a lot of ways to have fun in this world without spending money. There's a lot, but you know what? God can bless you when you do it right, and you can do things like, oh wow, I got to do that for even less than I thought. You know, that's God's favor in your life, and it's very important that we do it right. Sit down and plan that budget out. And like I said, most importantly, if you want God to be involved, you got to have God in there. God always makes our financial dreams come true when we include Him in the process. And He gives us reason in the Bible how to do it. And some people go, well, I can't afford to put God in the process. I'll tell you, you can't afford not to put God in the process. You can't afford not to tithe or give an offering or first fruits. Because when you do that, you're saying, God, I don't trust you enough to help me when I need you. And watch what God will do. He can make your budget go further. That's happened to me so many times in my life where I didn't think I had the money for something. And it just worked out. But you know what I never stopped doing? It's tithing, giving offerings, giving first fruits. Uh, now, early in my life, I wasn't as good at it. Uh, but today, I can tell you right now, I, if God wants it, He's got it. Because I know He will give me back whatever He needs to to make me. Because He wants me to be happy. Because I'm happy. I want to tell more people about Jesus. And that's what it all comes down to. You know, money is the biggest source of disappointment in our lives and discouragement in not in Christians in the world as a whole because the people just don't seem to handle it well now the statistics bear it out most people on the outside look ahead they seem to get it together but it's like 90% of people live paycheck to paycheck and it's because they don't have a goal they don't have discipline in their life um, you know all about Christianity is about becoming disciples we get the word what discipline and, and, uh, and when you discipline yourself you can be get you can get peace and that's what this class is about, right on the money. It's about getting you right about money so you can control it instead of it controlling you. And it takes, it takes some steps. And, and like I said, if you, if you want help with that, find someone. If you want me to help you, just send me a note on Facebook here. I'd be happy to set up a time. Uh, if you don't live around here, I mean, the beauty of Facebook, we can FaceTime, we can talk about it. I can show you different things. Uh, I'm here to help you because I want you to be successful. Uh, because then you, you'll have peace and then you realize, boy, God really does bless me.
and he'll, and he'll mean a lot more to you. Because we, we do care, no matter what you talk about, Christians care about their pocketbook and where that is. Uh, but we do it properly. God can do some amazing things. Like I said, first got to have a goal. And after you have the goal, you got to set your money into different tiers. Survival, basic needs, and wants. Uh, and the first two trump the last one at all costs. And then, and then the, and the last thing, make it make sure every dollar has a name. And the dollars that don't have names, that's the ones you can do whatever you want with. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, I, I don't have I don't have a heating bill or a tithe bill or a, a housing bill or a car bill for this dollar. That's what you just found. You found a dollar you can do something with. You can put it into retirement. You can go out and have fun with it. Because remember, fun is something. Part of your money should be fun, because if you're not having fun, you're going to be miserable. You know, we need to do that. You know, we need to enjoy that, uh, that time out and do those things. Uh, so I hope this, this, so this is way back in the beginning, and it, it might seem a little jumbled because I'm kind of reviewing some things. If, we, if you want to go deeper into any of these subjects, I can do that. I have a whole, actually, if you go on the YouTube channel, I have a whole session on the tiers. I have a whole session on how to put your money into either an envelope or a, a budget system where you name every dollar. Uh, we went into depth on that, and you have to scroll pretty far down. Uh, but I just want to bring it up, because right now everybody's really worried about inflation and will they have enough money. Here's what I guarantee you. You set a goal, stick to your tiers, make sure God's involved, not just saying it, but actually putting money towards Him and saying, God, this is for you. You do all three of those things, God will be sure you get to your goals, God will give you peace, and when a bill comes from out of nowhere, guess who else will come from out of nowhere? God to take care of it. Because you're doing things the way you ask. You're being a wise steward. And God always blesses a wise steward. The problem is sometimes we want to be a wise steward only when there's a financial crisis. Uh, be a wise steward all the time and then God will always show up. And then when you don't have a crisis, he'll still show up. And you'll be even better off than you think you are. That's pretty cool. And that's what God promises in the Bible. So I uh, hope you enjoyed tonight's class. Let me pray for you tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time tonight. And Lord, to help people, Lord, um, we, we're in some really strange times where a lot of people are worried about their finances and what's going on in their life. And, and part of it is because we're not taught to do goals and be wise stewards like, like you say in the Bible. Uh, and think if people can do that and grasp onto it, and some Lord and I will start doing that. I know it'll be tough the first couple months because it, it, you'll see things that they don't want to see in their budgets or in, in their tears and they'll go, oh man, and Maybe they you brought the tears, but Lord, it helps them to be able to realize what they've been given, Lord, and be a good steward of it. And then what God says, Lord, you said you will bless that person over and above what we can ever imagine, Lord. And you will give them peace, something they're looking for. Um, maybe they're watching this program and they know someone who's not in peace. Maybe they can share this program with them. And Lord, we just want to help them in any way, Lord, so they can have the peace that, that you want them to have. So they can have the amazing, happy life that you want them to have. So they can enjoy this life and not have any worries. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for watching. And remember, as always, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you are awesome.